Hello aspirants, uh, welcome to another video of ecology and environment series by Law Excellence. In this video, we will try to understand uh, important environmental organizations and bodies for the prelims exam. Uh, the first organization we are going to talk about is uh, IUCN. See, IUCN stands for International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. See, this organization is an uh, international NGO and it was established in the year 1948. The headquarters of this uh, uh, body is in a gland of the country Switzerland. This organization works in the field of uh, biodiversity conservation, uh, research, uh, field products and uh, advocacy. It also runs uh, field products for uh, habitat and uh, species conservation around the world. See, this organization uh, publishes the red list data or the red data books every year. Red data book maintains the conservation status of uh, different species or uh, organisms. It also gives the list of uh, threatened species. And this organization also produces the IUCN red list of uh, ecosystems. See the organization is funded by the governments, uh, bilateral and uh, multilateral agencies, foundations, member organizations or uh, cooperations. If you look at the different categories under the red data book, it includes uh, extinct, uh, extinct in the wild and these three categories come under threatened and uh, near threatened and also least concern. The next body we are going to talk about is the Worldwide Fund for Nature. It is uh, denoted by the word WWF. See, this is an international non-profit organization which is dedicated to the preservation as well as the conservation of nature and its uh, different species. It was in news because uh, six mammal, bird and uh, fish species which were facing the specter of extinction in uh, Russia, according to the World Wide Fund. It is the world's uh, biggest conservation organization. It was established on uh, 29th April of the year 1961. Its original name was uh, World Wildlife Fund. Its mission is to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to the diversity of uh, life on earth. See also WWF works in the areas of uh, climate, food, forests, freshwater, oceans as well as uh, wildlife also primarily. If you look at some of the campaigns launched by the WWF, uh, they include the Earth Hour as well as the Death for Nature Swap. Also this uh, body publishes the Living Planet Report in which the health of the planet and the impact of uh, human activities on nature are talked about. It is, uh, this report is based on the Living Planet Index and the calculations of uh, ecological footprints. The next body we are going to talk about is the United Nations Intergovernmental Planner on uh, Climate Change. It was uh, set up by the World Meteorological Organization together with the United Nations Environment Program to provide an objective source of uh, scientific info information. It is the United Nations body for assessing the science related to climate change. The main aim of this uh, United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is to provide political leaders with uh, periodic scientific assessments concerning with the climate change, it, its implications and risks as well as to put forward adaptation as well as the mitigation strategies. At present, it uh, consists of uh, 195 member countries and the headquarters of this organization is in uh, Geneva of uh, Switzerland. If you look at the structure of this uh, organization, uh, it consists of the IPCC Secretariat which consists of a plenary bureau as well as the executive committee. Along with that, it has uh, three working groups. The working group one deals with the physical science basis of the climate change standards. 
the working group two deals with the impacts adaptation and also the vulnerability the working group 3 deals with the mitigation of uh, climate change and also there's a task force which uh, deals with the national greenhouse gas uh, inventory inventories so in 2013 the ipcc provided more clarity about the role of human activities in the climate change phenomenon when it released its uh, fifth assessment report so in its conclusion of the report it says that the climate change is real and the human activities are the main cause for this uh, climate change the next body we are going to talk about is the national green tribunal ngt see it is a statutory body established under the national green tribunal act 2010 It has been established for the effective and uh, expeditious disposal of cases uh, relating to the environmental protection as well as the conservation of forests and also many other natural resources including the enforcement of any legal right relating to the environment and also giving relief and uh, compensation for the damages to the persons and uh, property and also the matters connected to therewith or incidental thereto the tribunal shall not be bound by the procedure laid down under the code of civil procedure 1908 but shall be guided by the principles of natural justice it has a power of the civil court the headquarters of this organization is in uh, new delhi Uh, with its uh, regional benches at uh, bhopal pune kolkata as well as uh, chennai if you look at the composition it can have uh, 20 members each from the judicial background as well as the expert members also these judicial members have to be sc judge or the chief justice of uh, high courts note that uh, this national green tribunal does not deal with the uh, wildlife protection act 1972 and uh, ngt deals with some of the acts which have been given below the next organization we are going to talk about is the national board for wildlife it was constituted under the uh, wildlife uh, protection act 1972 prime minister is the chairman of this organization and the vice chairman is the minister of environment see this serves as an apex body to review all the wildlife related matters and also it deals with the approval of projects in and around uh, national parks as well as the wildlife sanctuaries if you look at the other members of this organization it includes the members of parliament uh, secretaries of the government of india from uh, relevant departments ecologists conversationalists and heads of research institutes etc and if you look at the functions of this uh, body the first and foremost function is uh, pr- promotion and development of uh, wildlife and its uh, conservation and also it carries out uh, environment impact assessment for the projects it also makes uh, recommendations to the government uh, on the matters of uh, setting up of and management of uh, national parks wildlife sanctuaries and other protected areas also this body gives or uh, reserves the clearances to the projects in and around national parks and uh, other protected areas as discussed just now also the boundaries of the protected areas like the tiger reserves or any other protected area can't be altered without the national board of wildlife's approval and there are also like other functions like uh, it uh, publishes the reports on the state of wildlife in india it also frames policies for the wildlife protection forests and also curbing of uh, illegal poaching the next body we are going to talk about is the zoological survey of india zsi it was established to promote the survey exploration and research of the fauna in the region and it was established on 1st july 1916 it originated as the zoological section of the indian museum in kolkata 
the activities of the zoological survey of india are coordinated by the conservation and survey division under the ministry of environment forest and climate change it gradually expanded by strengthening its staff and expanding its research program and also the survey has met the challenges of the past and is in its way to meet the demands of the future it uh, primary objectives includes uh, exploring surveying inventorying and uh, monitoring of the faunal diversity in various states as well as uh, selected ecosystems and uh, protected areas in india and some of the secondary objectives include gis and uh, remote sensing studies on the recorded animal diversity as well as the threatened species the next organization we are going to talk about is the botanical survey of india bsi see it is the apex research organization under the ministry of environment forests and uh, climate change for carrying out uh, taxonomic and uh, floristic studies on the wild plant resources in the country it was established on 13th february 1890 with an objective to explore uh, plant resources of the country and to identify plant species with uh, different economic virtues see sir george king is the then superintendent of the royal botanic garden at calcutta he was appointed it as the first ex officio honorary director of the bsi it has a uh, nine regional circles situated at uh, different regions in the country and its primary objectives are to undertake intensive floristic surveys and uh, collect accurate and detailed information on uh, occurrence distribution ecology and uh, economic utility of uh, plants in the country the next organization we are going to talk about is the genetic engineering appraisal committee geac see it is a statutory body constituted under the rules for the manufacture use export import and uh, storage of uh, hazardous microorganisms or uh, genetically engineering organisms or cells 1989 notified under the environment protection act 1986 it was formed as the genetic engineering approval committee and then it was uh, renamed on to its uh, current name in uh, 2010 this body functions under the ministry of uh, environment forests and uh, climate change also this body regulates the use manufacture storage export and import of uh, hazardous microorganisms or the genetically engineered organisms and uh, cells in india also this committee has the power to take uh, punitive action against the people or bodies under the environment protection act see the approval of this body is mandatory before genetically modified organisms and products derived from them can be used uh, commercially the next body we are going to talk about is the wildlife crime control bureau wccb it is a statutory body which was established by amending the wildlife protection act 1972 see this bureau would uh, complement the efforts of the state governments primary enforcers of the wildlife protection act 1972 and other enforcement agencies of the country and it was established to combat the organized wildlife crime in the country Section 38Z of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 mandates this body to collect and collate the intelligence related to the organized wildlife crime activities and to disseminate the same to the state and their enforcement agencies for immediate action so as to apprehend the criminals and establish a centralized wildlife crime data bank also this uh, body assists and advises the customs authorities in the inspection of uh, consignments of uh, flora and fauna as per the provisions of the wildlife protection act sites and exim policy governing such an item the next one is the compensatory afforestation fund management and uh, planning authority it has been created by the ministry of uh, environment uh, forests and uh, climate change to compensate the loss of the forest area and to maintain the sustainability the government of india came up with a well defined act known as the 
Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Planning Authority. This law establishes the National Compensatory Afforestation Fund under the Public Account of India and a State Compensatory Afforestation Fund under the Public Account of uh, each state. These funds uh, will receive payments for compensatory afforestation, net present value of the forest and any other uh, specific payments for the project. The national fund will receive 10% of these funds and the state funds will receive the 90% of these funds. Also according to the Acts provision, a company diverting the forest land must provide alternative land to take up a compensatory afforestation. For this afforestation, the company should also pay to the plant new trees in the alternative land provided to the state. The next organization we are going to talk about is the United Nations Environment Program UNEP. It was founded as the result of the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment which is also called as the Stockholm Conference in the year 1972. This organization is uh, headquartered at uh, Nairobi of uh, Kenya. If you look at the funding to this organization, the three main sources are the United Nations uh, regular budget, the environment fund and the year market con contributions. Emissions gap report is a flagship report from the United Nations environment program and it assesses the gap between the anticipated emissions in 2030 and also the levels consistent with the 1.5 degree and the 2 degree targets of the Paris Agreement. Now if you look at the functions of this uh, UNEP, it coordinates the United Nations environmental activities as long as assisting the developing countries in implementing environmentally sound policies as well as practices. It has also been active in funding and implementing the environment related development projects. The UNEP also aided the formulation of uh, guidelines and treaties on issues such as the trade in potentially harmful chemicals, transboundary air pollution, contamination of uh, international waterways. UNEP is also one of the several implementing agencies of a global environment facility and the multilateral fund for the implementation of a Montreal Protocol. The next one is the World Meteorological Organization WMO. It was in news because uh, recently it has published the statement on the state of uh, global climate 2019 on the sidelines of a high level meeting on climate and uh, sustainable development. If you look at some of the findings of this report, they are uh, 2018 was the warmest year, sea level rising was uh, continuing, the ocean heat content was at uh, record high and etc. It is an uh, intergovernmental organization and it is headquartered at uh, Geneva of uh, Switzerland. At present it has uh, 192 member states as well as territories. It was established by the ratification of the World Meteorological Organization Convention on uh, 23rd March 1950 and WMO became a specialized agency of the United Nations for the Meteorology, Operational Hydrology and uh, Related uh, Geophysical Sciences. Some of the reports uh, released by this WMO are the Greenhouse Gas Bulletin, Status of the World Climate, etc. See March 23rd of the every year is uh, celebrated as the World Meteorological Day. And this day is uh, together observed by the both WMO and the United Nations. The theme of uh, 2020 was uh, climate and uh, water. The theme focuses on uh, drought, uh, floods, frozen water and uh, many more. And this year's slogan is uh, count every drop, every drop counts. The next organization we are going to talk about is uh, Traffic, a wildlife trade monitoring network. CIT is a leading non-governmental organization working on the wildlife trade in the context of both uh, biodiversity conservation as well as uh, sustainable development. It was established in the year 1976 and uh, it is headquartered at uh, Cambridge of uh, United Kingdom. 
the aim of this organization is to ensure that the trade in wild plants and animals is not a threat to the conservation of uh, nature it was established as a strategic alliance of wwf and uh, iucn it is uh, governed by the traffic committee which is the steering group composed of uh, members of traffic's partner organizations wwf and uh, iucn it also works in a uh, close cooperation with the secretariat of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of uh, Wild Flora and Fauna, which is CITES. Traffic came into India in the year 1991, operating as a division of uh, WWF India. Its latest campaign is the Wanted Alive series on uh, Tiger, Leopard, Snow Leopard and uh, Cloud Leopard. The next organization we are going to talk about is the Ministry of uh, Environment, Forest and uh, Climate Change. it is the nodal agency in the administrative structure of the central government for the planning promotion coordination and also it oversees the implementation of uh, environment and uh, forestry programs it is the nodal agency in the country for the united nations environment program unep if you look at some of the principal activities taken by it they are the conservation of uh, plants animals forests and uh, wildlife prevention and control of pollution afforestation and uh, regeneration of uh, degraded areas protection of environment in the framework of legislation and also it overlooks the welfare of uh, animals the main tools uh, utilized for this include environmental surveys impact assessment control of the pollutants research collection and uh, dissemination of uh, environmental information and also creation of uh, environmental awareness among uh, all sectors of country's population the next organization we're going to talk about is the bombay natural history society bnhs it was founded on uh, 15 september 1883 and it is one of the largest uh, non governmental organizations in india engaged in conservation and uh, biodiversity it is a partner of the bird life international in india It has been designated as a scientific and a research organization by the Department of the Science and Technology of India. The logo of BNHS is a great hornbill as you can see here. Uh, you all know about the IT firm Accenture and this BNHS have developed Internet of Birds platform and this is used to identify bird species found in India using uh, artificial intelligence technology. which includes uh, machine learning and uh, computer vision from the digital photos uploaded by the public the next organization we're going to talk about is uh, bird life international which we referred just now it was earlier known as the international council for bird preservation and uh, it was established in uh, the year 1922 this is the logo of the bird life international it is an international uh, non-profit non-governmental organization which is a uh, headquartered at cambridge uh, of uh, uk it aims to achieve a global partnership of uh, conservation organizations that strives to conserve birds their habitats and uh, global biodiversity working with people towards uh, sustainability in the use of natural resources official listing authority for the world conservation union's red list of threatened species It has a uh, six regional bird life coordination offices throughout the world and a global office in the Cambridge UK and together it is all known as the Bird Life International Secretariat. The secretariat coordinates and uh, facilitates the Bird Life International strategies, programmes and also policies. The Animal Welfare Board of India is a statutory advisory body under the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act. It was uh, set up in the year 1962 and it was set up to advise on the animal welfare laws and uh, policy making. The headquarters of this Animal Welfare Board of India is in the Chennai of Tamil Nadu and the board has a uh, 28 members which has a 3 year term that can be renewed. The Animal Welfare Board of India scheme relates to the provision of assistance for the 
following types of activities which includes financial assistance to animal welfare organizations for maintaining the stray animals in distress and for their treatment uh, human education programs for the welfare of animals are also implemented by the animal welfare board of india also the expenditure on a variety of uh, other animal welfare activities such as the rescue of cattle from the smuggling rehabilitation of uh, rescued circus animals lab animals legal expenses in connections to the court cases regarding the animal welfare etc the next one we are going to look at uh, is the central zoo authority it is an uh, affiliate member of the world association of uh, zoos and uh, aquariums this body has been constituted under the wildlife protection act 1972 and the primary objective of this authority is to complement the national effort in conservation of wildlife now if you look at some of the key functions of this organization they are to set standards for the upkeep of zoos and uh, recognize and derecognize zoos it assigns the endangered species to the zoos for nurturing to undertake the training programs for the zoo personnel and uh, coordinate and research in captive breeding including the provision of technical and other assistance to the zoos it also undertakes uh, other actions with uh, regards to the zoos as may be necessary under the wildlife protection act the next one is the national biodiversity authority mba it has been created under the biodiversity act 2002 and the state biodiversity boards and uh, biodiversity management committees it is uh, created to ensure free and equitable benefits sharing that arise out of the research on the indian biodiversity see anyone seeking to obtain uh, intellectual property rights to knowledge obtained out of the research on the biological resources has to obtain the permission of the national biodiversity authority also it can impose conditions for approving the grant of approvals it advises the state governments to denote certain natural sites as the heritage sites these are uh, state biodiversity boards grant approval for the bio survey or uh, bio utilization or even the commercialization of the biological resources by indians now if you look at the local level biodiversity management committees are created for conservation sustainable use and uh, documentation of the biodiversity the next one we are going to talk about is the central pollution control board uh, cpcb see it is a statutory organization constituted under the water prevention and uh, control of pollution act 1974 and it obtains its uh, powers and functions under air prevention and control of pollution act 1981 it serves as a field formation and also provides uh, technical services to the ministry of environment forest and climate change of the provisions of environment protection act 1986 now if you look at some of the important functions which include the central pollution control board or uh, promotion of cleanliness of streams and wells in uh, different areas of the states by prevention control and uh, abatement of uh, water pollution and the second one is to improve the quality of air and to prevent control or abate air pollution in the country it is uh, led by the chairman followed by member secretary and uh, other members the next one is the wildlife institute of india see it is an uh, autonomous institution under the ministry of environment forest and uh, climate change it was established in the year 1982 and it is based in uh, dehradun of uh, uttarakhand now if you look at some of the activities uh, carried out by it it offers uh, training programs academic courses and advisory in the wildlife research and uh, management The Wildlife Institute of India also carries out uh, wildlife research in areas of uh, study like uh, biodiversity, endangered species, wildlife policy, wildlife management, wildlife forensics, also spatial modeling, eco development, habitat ecology, as well as climate change. Also, 
Also, the Wildlife Institute of India has a research facility that includes uh, forensics, remote sensing, and uh, GIS laboratory, herbarium, and uh, an electronic library. The Forest Survey of India is a national organization which is uh, responsible for the assessment and uh, monitoring of the forest resources of India regularly. This body functions under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and the headquarters of this uh, organization is in Dehradun of uh, Uttarakhand. It was established in the year 1981. See this organization is headed by a Director General who is an Indian Forest Services Officer. The Forest Survey of India uses the satellite data for mapping the forest cover in the country. If you look at the, some of the key functions of the organization, the Forest Survey of India is engaged in the assessment of country's forest resources on a regular interval. Also it is involved in the forest cover assessment of a country on a biennial basis by the interpretation of uh, satellite data on a two year cycle and also it presents this information in the form of uh, India's State of Forest Report. It also forms an uh, inventory of forests and uh, trees outside the forests in both urban as well as rural areas. Now if we look at the National Ganga Council, the Prime Minister is the Chairman of the National Ganga Council and it has been formed under the Environmental Protection Act 1986. This National Ganga Council has been given the overall responsibility for the superintendence of uh, pollution prevention and uh, rejuvenation of uh, river Ganga Basin including uh, Ganga and its uh, tributaries. The National Mission for Clean Ganga NMCG, acts as an implementation arm of the National Ganga Council. Now if we look at some of the key points of the National Mission for Clean Ganga, it was established in the year 2011 as a registered society. This NMCG has a two-tier management structure and comprises of a governing council and a executive committee. The primary aims and objectives of uh, this NMCG are to ensure effective control of pollution and rejuvenation of the river Ganga by adapting a river basin approach to promote uh, intersectoral coordination for comprehensive planning and uh, management. It is also given the function to maintain minimum ecological flows in river Ganga to ensure water quality and environmentally sustainable development. The last one we are going to talk for today is the Wildlife Trust of India, which was formed in the year 1998 in response to rapidly deteriorating condition of wildlife in India. See the Wildlife Trust of India is a registered charity under Section 12A of Income Tax Act 1961. It has its headquarters at uh, Noida of Uttar Pradesh and it is a non-profit organization. The objective of this uh, organization is to conserve wildlife and its habitat and to work for the welfare of individual wild animals. Now if we look at some of the key functions of this uh, organization, it currently focuses on resources on six priority landscapes which are Northeast India, Western Himalayas, Terai, Southern Guard System, Central India and uh, Marine. The Wildlife Trust of India currently runs uh, 44 projects across India. Its uh, depth projects holistically address uh, multiple conservation hurdles specific to an area through a multi-pronged approach. But its uh, breadth projects address uh, specific conservation issues that may not be limited in time and space in the country. For example, the training of uh, frontline forest staff and uh, preventing wild animal deaths due to train heads, uh, etc. Thank you and all the very best.